Well, hip hop has always inspired me to write. And so when I was younger, I was a female MC, 16, 17, 18 in high school, things like that, even as I got a little bit older. But as I got older, I realized that, you know, after a while, I was kind of, that phase was kind of fading out for me, the female MC part of it. And so I decided to switch over to do spoken word. And so I've been doing that for quite a few years. Spoken word gives me a little bit more freedom um, to express myself without the confines of, you know, the 16 bars and a hook and, you know, things like that. So I'm able to do a little bit more. Um, I think I'm able to go a little bit deeper too. Not that MCN doesn't go deep, but within the spoken word realm, I can go as deep as I want to for as long as I want to. You know what I mean? Like it, it's very diverse and, um, sort of like life, you know what I mean? Life doesn't always fit in the box, and so neither does my work, so spoken word is a venue for me to do that. Um, well, I am a single mother, so I run my home, and so I make time for it. You know, I make time for what, it, what I need to do um, amongst the several hundred other things that I have to do. Um, as a mother, a worker, a student, um, and a poet, and a woman, just a woman, period. So I incorporate it into, if I'm able to, I do. If I have to take a minute off, I do, you know, and so I have a good handle on it. Um, to a degree, I think more, I think under, that's under the umbrella. The umbrella is being a woman, just the dynamic of being a woman, an African-American woman, and then that, that would be the overarching theme. Being a woman is what inspires me, and then the different things that we experience and go through. I honestly don't deal with current events that much um, because I'm not a take over the world big picture type person. I'm a one brick at a time person. So if I reach one young lady on the street and change her life, that's one brick. And then hopefully at the end of my life, I'll look back and see a whole wall of bricks. You know what I mean? So I think the politics and the, the election, like all the things that are going on, Black Lives Matter, all of that stuff is relevant to what's going on today. But I think it's a distraction to the bigger picture of people's hearts. I care about the hearts of our teenage girls, the hearts of our children. I don't invest my energies in things that I can't change on a broad scale. I'd rather do it on a smaller scale that is eventually going to pan out to be a broad scale. Yes and no. I say no because a lot of the things that I write about come from my pain and come from things that I would that I would hope they would never have to experience. And so um, I think my poetry is preventative. Um, and that's, whenever I go out to speak, I always say that the tragedy in life isn't that we go through things. The tragedy in life is that we don't tell our story and we don't reach back and grab somebody who is in the pit that we just got out of. And so I would, so I say no because I don't want my children to ever be in some of those pits that I've been in. And then I say yes because um, the pain drives me to want the best for them and make sure they have the best and provide the best atmosphere and resources so that they can um, be excellent human beings. Yeah, it happens all the time. Not, and I'm not saying that to suit my own horn, I'm saying that because the truth is universal. So my work is truth. So um, people, they have said that. They, every time I perform, I always hear that. Um, and when I go to perform, I always, like I have an idea of what I might want to do, but I scan the room and I watch people, you know what I mean? I see and I pick pieces that are relevant to, I think, uh, that I think are going to address the room. And 99% of the time it addresses the room. And not because I'm a great poet, but because God has given me the ability to tell the truth in a way that relates to people. So because truth is universal, it relates to everybody.
ironic you say that because I, um, so I have some friends who are in, in, in the industry and just people that I know who have been telling me forever that I need to do a CD. And the funny thing is, like I said, I'm not really in it for that. I, I, to be honest with you, I hate the politics of poetry. I hate going to shows and people forcing their CDs on you. I hate selling CDs out the back of a trunk. I hate, like, I hate the whole politics of poetry. It sickens me, to be honest with you. Um, I think in much respect of people who are able to do that, I know plenty of people that do that. However, so it's not about that for me, um, but over the summer I will have a lot more time to invest in perhaps doing a project. So it's definitely on my mind, it's been on my mind for a while, I just need to allocate my time appropriately. And so hopefully, maybe by the end of the summer, early fall, I will have something available. <laughs> Um, well, it's, I don't have one. I, I'm on Facebook. Um, I'm on YouTube a little bit. Not be, not even things that I put up. It's people who have seen me and put me up. Um, because like I said, I'm really not about the movement. And I guess, no, I was going to say I guess I should be, but I really don't think I should. I feel like I'm very, a more relational person and I like to speak to small groups of people. And um, the only benefit for me with regards to the social piece of it is it gives an opportunity for someone to hear me that will allow me to go to another setting. I'm not on Twitter. I think I may have set one up. I don't even know. Like I don't do Twitter. I don't do Instagram. I have a Facebook. That's about it. But I go where I'm invited. And so I guess it helps me out a little bit. And I do. I have had like numerous shows lined up. So I don't mind. I would do a hundred shows. Like the number of shows doesn't matter. Like I just go where I'm invited. Or if I see somewhere that seems interesting, you know, um, you know, I'll go myself. So um, that's fine. I, but you don't. Nobody needs. I don't need. A, no. You could just get to me. Like I don't need anybody to represent me or to speak for me or you know, if somebody is interested in me coming, I'll come. You know what I mean? I, it's no. It's not that deep for me, you know what I mean? It's just a matter of, I'm available, I'm there, you know what I mean? I would say more so the MC, I guess, would be the celebrity status that I looked at. As far as being a poet, it's just the poets that I know, that we, you know, that I go to events, they're not famous, you know, they're famous for their area, I suppose, you know what I mean? But, they wouldn't be famous in California or Oklahoma. It's just the people that I go, whenever I whenever I go, no matter how known or unknown the person is, when I hear someone share, it always inspires me to keep going. You know what I mean? So I don't really have anybody that I look to. You know what I mean? I just listen. I listen more than I look. And um, it's, it's um, contagious. You know what I mean? Sharing the truth is contagious. So it makes me want to continue on. Absolutely, absolutely, because um, we don't have the cap on knowledge, you know what I mean? We don't have the cap on every perspective and every um, thought process that's out there. So if you're, not, if you're not reading more than you're writing, you're doing yourself and the public a disservice. Yes, if I'm, if I'm among friends, yes, if I'm among people who I've uh, performed with in the past or I, there are certain venues that I frequent often and they know who I am, they know what I'm about, then absolutely. There have been times when, um, and I actually love this process because I guess I'm a little bit of a um, different looking person, you know, people would, like, I get all kinds of feedback on how my, how I present, you know what I mean, and uh, what my affect is when I walk into a room and most people perceive me as serious or um, not approachable or just, I guess because I'm in my zone, you know, whatever. So it, it's like they don't know what to expect. So they're like, I wish you, you know. But by the time I'm finished, they're very well aware of who I am. And so it's the whole room change. I love seeing the whole dynamic of the room change from whatever to wow, you know what I mean? I think that. Yes, yes, um, but I think that as a people, what we do sometimes is we never get to the root of things. So because we never get to the root, the issue returns and returns and returns. And so it'll be okay, it's like putting band-aids on a bullet hole. So it might be okay for a second. And so 
but the long term is not sustainable enjoyment. And I think that the only way that we'll receive sustainable enjoyment is if we're healthy and we're whole as individuals. And that takes a lot of self-introspection. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work for a person to look at their life and decide, okay, number one, I have some <clears throat> issues with myself. Like I have issues, I have problems. I'm not well, you know what I mean? I'm not well and get this, it's okay. So for people to just accept that, the fact that I, there are areas of my life that I need to work on. Most people like to ignore that because they think it's a negative, it's not. Secondly, the courage and the strength that it takes to work on those things, you know what I mean? So that way we can have sustainable enjoyment because if not, it's just going to be fleeting. It'll be a moment, it'll be a weekend, maybe a week if you're on vacation, but it's, the cloud is always going to be there. So I, don't, I do talk about enjoyable things um, and like things, but more so my mission personally is to get to the root of why. Why as young women do we go through this? Why as older women do we go through this? As people do we go through this? And if we can answer that, get to the root of it and solve that issue, then enjoyment is a natural reaction that will come along as a part of that. You know what I mean? So a lot of my stuff is deep, it's, it's very heavy, but it needs to be. It needs to be because that's just my platform, you know, and I respect, much respect to whomever has a platform about enjoyment, things like that, because that, that inspires me, you know what I mean? I just stick to my platform. Yes, to a degree, yes. Um, I'll touch on it because I don't, I've, I'm very big on respect of men, you know what I mean? And I'm very big on I'm not a man basher, I'm a man builder, you know, so um, just pointing out the problem just to have something to say is never effective, you know, so if I'm not coming with a solution or a suggestion to help um, men in the long term, I don't address it, you know what I mean, because um, it's unproductive. Mm -hmm. So yes, I do, I do speak to men, and um, but in a way that will address what the concern is, but also bring about encouragement as well, okay. so they don't feel defeated. Because any man that feels defeated is not even gonna try. So I would much rather do it in a way that's encouraging and challenging versus accusatory. Sure, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Tons, tons, it would take the rest of my life. My father, I've touched on it in a few of my poems, but um, I haven't really taken it head on just yet. Uh, my children, what a privilege to see them grow, you know what I mean? I'm sure my children's children, I have a daughter, you know, and I look forward to writing her story, you know, and um, sometimes I always say, sometimes I say, I hope more for my daughter than I hoped for myself, and so I look forward to seeing her journey unfold. Yeah, those are just a few, like, close to the heart type things, but there are plenty others. Um, not, well, I just do, not any, like, ticketed events, you know what I mean? I'll just mm -hmm. go to open mics or, like okay. I said, wherever I'm invited, it's nothing is too small, nothing is too big. I've done huge conferences, um, and I've done little, five people can fit in a room places, you know what I mean? So uh, I am on Facebook, and so I usually, you know, you usually see where I'm gonna be there, and things like that, or, or if you wanna reach me to invite me, that's what usually my, my medium um, in order to do that. Yep, Facebook. My name on Facebook is Alta Lane, A-L-T-A. -A Lane, L-A-N-E. My stage name is Lady Lane, and they can just inbox me. I uh, always respond, and most of the time, 99% of the time, I go where I'm invited. Yo, what's up? It's your man, the indicator. You know what it is. I know who it is. My name is The Indicator. Mm -hmm. 
indicator. Enough said on that one.